Mr. Danby, just for the camera's purpose, I gotta let you know. You see the poster. Yeah. Slap it around the wall. But everything in the room is audio and video recorded. Okay. Uh, like I said before, I'm afraid to leave any time. If you don't want to answer any of my questions, if you feel uncomfortable answering something that I've asked, just tell me and we'll move on. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm gonna recap everything that I know mm -hmm. so far okay. as far as why we're here. Um, we'll both get on the same page before I move forward with any questioning. And then hopefully when we're done, we'll uh, move along with it. Okay. okay. Your name is Jamie Trogdon? Yes. Correct. Okay. Can you tell me, before I get into that, um, Jamie, you do have the right to remain silent. Okay. Anything that you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to have an attorney present with you during questioning if you wish. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, one will be appointed to you if you wish. Do you have any questions about what I just read to you? Tell me what your job is currently. Secretary. Okay. For the Adair County Sheriff's Department? Yes. And how long have you worked there? Um, almost five years. Okay. Um, do you also dispatch? Yes. For the 911 Center, kind of on a part-time basis? Just a part-time. I used to do every Saturday, but okay. Okay. just kind of as needed. Sure. Um, and you've been there since 2015, you said? Give or take? Yeah. Okay. 14 or 15. Um, so, why we're here is I'm here to ask you questions pertaining to a report that was brought to our attention back in early September. Uh, an individual came to our department with some FOIA documents mm -hmm. uh, she had FOIA'd from the Sheriff's Department pertaining to your pay records. Yes. Now, when I spoke to that person, uh, she told me she had been approached by what she described as a handful of county employees who were I'll characterize it as disgruntled. Mm -hmm. And their aggravations, as I understood it, come from um, they felt that the system, and when I say the system, I mean the Sheriff's Department's payroll was being manipulated. And they felt that you were the individual manipulating those payrolls okay. um, for financial gain. Uh, they indicated to me that they had been, and again, all of this information is coming from this person and that person. Right. So in a sense, it's kind of the rumor mill that has come to one person yeah. that is projecting those, yes. what they hear, to law enforcement. Yeah. So their ultimate concern was they didn't feel like you were discharging the duties of your office um, in full, the way they thought you should be. They believe that you were taking excessive time off, that was undue to you um, and in substance that was their, their main complaint mm -hmm. as they felt this had been going on for a few years um, and they thought it was getting worse okay. so um, since that time and like I explained to you before um, we started the camera rolling the state police were contacted because anytime that there's an investigation that's mm -hmm requested involving a sister law enforcement agency, right. if you will, we try to stay away from that based on, you know, any potential conflicts of interest. Um, however, they were unwilling or unable to investigate said complaint, so that is why we're here today. Okay. Um, now, since this all came to be reported, um, I have obtained dispatch logs, payroll records, um, and policies and procedures from the Sheriff's Department. Now, what I've done with those is I've taken the dispatch logs and I've cross-referenced them with the payrolls that have been submitted since the middle of 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've also figured those numbers in payroll by payroll with each payroll and its ending date. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, reviewing the policies and so on and so forth. My first question is, as a secretary, um, do you have, are you the payroll coordinator in a sense for the Sheriff's Department? Yeah. And I mean, I just turn in the hours to Pam. Okay, so every employee of the Sheriff's Department submits their time cards to you? Yes. And then you forward those to the Treasurer's Office? Yes. How? She has an Excel spreadsheet that she sends me. Okay. I input the hours to the Excel spreadsheet and send them to her, and she does all the okay. payroll. Um, at the Sheriff's Office, is there any, 
and I guess I'll, I'll word it, checks and balances system for whenever you receive the timesheets, is it verified and validated by the sheriff? As in, when you get the time carved, does he look at them or do you just send, you send them, and is it by email? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, is it always by email, but nothing's ever hand delivered, it's just yeah. easier for yeah, sure? Yeah, it's always by email. Um, and then has that been part of your job description ever since you began? Yes. As far as the payroll is concerned? Mm -hmm. um, incrementally, I just want to verify everyone has their starting salary rate, mm -hmm. but every year you've been employed there, there's always an incremental raise that comes yes. back, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, describe to me, I guess, your scheduled work day is what? Um, I pretty much get there anywhere between. 8 and 8.30, okay. stay between 4 and 4.30, depending on what time. Jeff's always been pretty lenient with everything. Okay. When you say lenient, do you just, he's pretty, you know, he's okay with a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there. He's not a stickler, as in it's got to be 8, it's got to be 4 no, o'clock. No, no, okay. no. Um, has Jeff at any point ever been a part of validating pay records and what's been submitted for forwarding to the treasurer's office. Mm -hmm. that, that's always been your as part of your yes. sole job description. Yes. Um, during your work day, is it a scheduled eight-hour work day you're yeah. supposed to work? Yeah. Okay, so um, part of what I'm going to ask here is through the county's policy book, mm -hmm. um, it denotes that administrative personnel are working eight to four um, work day generally the same hours as a courthouse they correspond with each other um, as I understand that there's an hour of lunch that is supposed to be unpaid yes and I think that's where a majority of this comes from okay so do you Bryce Stratton when he was yes. there yeah. he was going through and he said we're supposed to get an hour paid lunch and I said, no, we don't get an hour paid lunch. I said, I've never got that. This was in, I think, back in June, okay. maybe, maybe a little before that, give or take. And I said, we don't get an hour paid lunch. And he's like, yeah, we'll look at the county policy. He called, um, I believe it was Pam he talked to. Okay. And she said, yes, you know, we get the, the hour lunch break and whether there's a miscommunication. But I even called, like when that FOIA request came in, I even called Bryce. Because that's when, when I asked Nan about it, and she said she thought it was because of the lunch break. And so I called Bryce and I said, oh, we're under the same understanding, right? You know, that we got an hour paid, because that's what he started doing. He was working 8 to 4 with an hour paid lunch break. Is that a union? Is it a thing in their bargaining? He's, no, he's not in the union. Right, he was administrative. But yes. as far as the other CEOs that were unionized, was that part uh, of their contract? They got an hour paid lunch or no. they didn't? No, no one they got a half lunch. hour paid lunch. Okay. So, now obviously that, that in part was some of the concern because yeah. the hour paid lunch, contrary yeah. to county policy, had been given for, well, 2015, 16, 17, 18, up until June when it was discovered mm -hmm. that that was not, in fact, how it was supposed to be paid. Yeah. Um, the other half of it is the, you mentioned Jeff and, and leniency, uh -huh. a lot of concerns that have been, again, projected to me mm -hmm. through conversation have been, um, they feel that when I say manipulating the system, quote unquote, they claim you come in late every day. They claim that um, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing between 8 and 4. They claim that you, over the course of a few years, leave the building repeatedly for personal business. Um, my question to you is, at any point during the course of your career with the Sheriff's Department, have you necessarily left the building, whether it's for a doctor's appointment, whatever, that anything personal that you need to attend to and, mm -hmm. and given yourself payment for that without using benefit time? And Jeff was like, I used to go get my daughter from school and take her home. Jeff was aware of it, was fine with it. Okay. So. And there's a lot of, like, I would have to come in in the middle of the night 
to dress females out. Like, none of that's on the log. Right. It's not on dispatch log. There's times when I'd have to go meet D out at the firehouse, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd have to do that for, it'd be a couple hours at a time, of course. doing that out there with him and, and Rich, and that's not anything I ever brought to work and said, hey, I'm two hours, I'm coming in at 10 today, mm -hmm. because I spent two hours at the firehouse doing Right. A lot, a lot of things that were done and in excess were not documented and not accounted for. So you're, you did a lot of extra stuff that was unseen. Yes. Yeah, and that can be verified by D, Richie, Jeff. So uh, ultimately, I guess my, my concerns in looking at this thing from the outside in is that, you know, I understand Jeff is the sheriff and that's the employer. You know, he can make the rules. Mm -hmm. He governs that place. Mm -hmm. That's his job. He is the mm -hmm. boss. Yeah. Um, the problem is the leniency, it can only go so far because when he's telling you it's okay to run and go do stuff on the clock that's personal, and then other people start to get frustrated by it because they feel they're not given afforded the same opportunities. So. Mm -hmm where they're coming from, and, and frankly, for me as a government employee myself, Jeff does not have the authority to say, yeah, you're free to go do this, you know, whenever you get back, you get back, and then get paid for it, because all government employees, we're expected to, you know, you have a job that you're doing at the Sheriff's Department, I have a job that I'm supposed to be doing, you know, 10 and a half hours throughout my work day. So, I'm not, gonna, I'm not sitting here telling you you did it wrong. I'm See, sitting here. I've always made up my time, though. Like on the back end, yeah. Okay. Whether I stay till five or, you know, I've I've not, I'm not one that's like, I don't know. I'm just not that type of person, I guess. Sure. No, I I understand. And again, not we a dishonest person. Like we talked about the log, and yes. you know, that is ninety five percent of the information that I have. I have to compare to the dispatch log. Now you mm -hmm. and I both know, both that's having worked in the nine one one center. You cannot be accurate all the time. I understand yes. there's yeah. going to be holes and voids in yes. that. So yeah. what I'm going to tell you is there was a sub substantial amount of math that had to go into figuring, you know, hours unaccounted for versus mm -hmm. overtime is figured in. Long story short is that if there was a day on the log or it didn't reflect you mm -hmm. coming back into the building when you left, mm -hmm. then that was not counted as math or hours unaccounted for. And otherwise, I'm trying to say it does not, it doesn't affect you in a negative way. I'm saying that if there was a question as to whether or not there was a quote unquote eight hour day worked, you know, that was not counted against you, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so if there was any doubt whatsoever, it was an eight hour day. Mm -hmm. Now, I scrapped out some numbers, and again, my math, it's not going to be exact, mm -hmm. um, but when I looked at the logs compared to the pay sheets, and I figured in if there was a time where you came in after 8 o'clock mm -hmm. or left before 4 o'clock, those numbers were factored in, and I also had to figure in the hour of lunch that's supposed to be unpaid. Mm -hmm. um, from 2017 to 18 to 19, I'll tell you that I came upon a a substantial number of hours that I'll say are unaccounted for. When I say unaccounted for, I mean I can't validate them on the log. I can't. There's no indication to me that you were in the building during those times. I mean, I'm not saying this for this is not from room or this is just from papers I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, and that's it. So, and I'm going to throw this number out to you. In between all three years combined. I came to a total number. Let me see if I'm we're, to get out of the bare bones of it, we're talking a couple hundred hours and thousands of dollars that appear to have been. And again, I'm not saying misappropriated. I'm saying these are the discrepancies. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm taking into account is what I'm being told mm -hmm. with the numbers and documents that I have to look at, and then I have to create some sort of a 
assessment, mm -hmm. if you will, of what's true and what's not. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you're a dishonest person. Mm -hmm. I've, I've known you for some time. Yeah. Um, but there again, whenever I work these, these kinds of cases, when we talk about financial crimes, you know, I just have to, you know, I have to ask very directed questions. I know you told me before, you know, you have not documented anything that has been false in any way, shape, or form. But there again, um, you know, Jeff, I know, is laid back. He's a laid back boss. He's very lenient. Mm -hmm. So, and I want, you to, I want you to think hard on it because I'm not trying to pry you for information. I'm not trying to get you to say anything that's not true. I just want you to be sure when you tell me, because I'm, believe me, I'm not here to judge anybody. Yeah. It's not it's not my place. I'm here to find yeah. out what's true and what's not. So at, at any point in your time there, you know, have you ever left a couple hours early and wrote down a full day's work? Have you ever come in late, maybe say an hour late, and then put yourself down for a full work day and not thought about it? I know you said that you have made it up on the back end, but I just yes. want you to really think for me if there's ever been a time where maybe you've got a couple hours here and a couple hours there, and then, I mean... No, not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, well, so... Like I said, there's even been days that, you know, I went to Jeff and I'm like, you know, do you have anything for me to do? What can I do? Sure. And he's like, no, I don't have anything. You know, go ahead and get out of here. Okay. I mean, it's... And the other thing that it just, again, from the outside looking in, it, it doesn't look great is that I'm looking through, and these are just county policies here. This mm -hmm. is the old sheriff's department policy yeah. um, that has not been amended since as Motley was right. sheriff. And of course, the county's personnel policy. Now, yeah. these guidelines or these policies, mind you, um, they're very, they seem not strict per se, but they're they're firm. Mm -hmm. So it talks about an eight to four work day. Um, it talks about you know people are expected to do this and do that. So like for instance, it talks about being at work um, punctually and on time. So on the log on most days, it, it reflects you coming in between you know eight fifteen and nine o'clock. I think on a lot of days, which is okay by Jeff, but when you turn to the policy not okay right so what contradicts so, there is the sheriff what the sheriff says is supposed to be you know what he's okay with and then there's what the county policy says now it's kind of a it's a fork in the road when the sheriff is going against his own policies effectively because it's what's listed in the sheriff's office policy and it's what's listed in the county handbook and he that doesn't necessarily it's not his place as an elected official to say to his employee, hey, you know, take the rest of the day off. And I'm not saying this is what he's telling you. I'm saying in substance, uh, hey, take the rest of the day off. No big deal. You know, come in tomorrow and just don't worry about clocking or anything down. It's that kind of thing that creates a negative perception. Yeah. And like I said, that's only happened a couple times because normally it, I do have sure. stuff that needs done. Is there any way that you can explain to me in your words uh, how I have and I'm going to go ahead and I've got the actual number, the finished math that I've come up with written down. It looks to me that as far as the hours that are in question or discrepancy um, equate to about $7,000. That And that these are multiply each hour that can't be accounted for is multiplied times your hourly rate at the year of mm -hmm. that given year. So if it was 2017, it was at your 13.50 an hour rate and okay. so on and so forth. If, yeah. if that's making sense. Okay. Um, if there were overtime hours that were in question, that was multiplied times your yearly wage hourly times one and a half, mm -hmm. that time and a half. And then of course there's this figure regarding the lunch hours. Mm -hmm. Now I'll tell you that just the lunch hours alone mm -hmm. over the course of what, 19, 18 and half of the 2017, that's a few thousand dollars also, just one hour a day per business day for the entire calendar year. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of a double-edged sword. You've got the money for the paid lunches that were mm -hmm. not supposed to be paid and then you have the money that is the question that's yeah. unaccounted for. I'm just trying to understand how there's such a large number that's 
that's not there. Which because in the lunch break, like I said, I got Bryce who can back that up. That right. yes, we were, you know, and then when it got brought to my attention, I was like, okay, we won't do the hour lunch break anymore. It's not a big deal. Okay. Um, but like I said, those numbers won't have on there the time that I, you know, get called in the middle of the night to dress out a female or go do investigation stuff for DE or, you know. So, and I guess that, that brings up another question for me is, so D was having you do investigative work, is it's, that what I'm understanding? Yes, yeah, so I would have to go to the firehouse. I'd have to go to the bathroom with the female, okay. like when they were going to go do drug buys or whatever. Sure. I'd have to go dress the female out. Um, I'd have to stay around until they came back to make sure when she came back she didn't have anything on her that she didn't have when she went. Sure. You know, I have to do Verify that. before and after. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I would have to, like when they would do, um, like I'd, Richie Wilson and I had to one time, like when they were doing um, a bust, so I, my car is unmarked, you know, and labeled. Nobody would know who it was. So right. I drove Richie, you know, so that he'd sit and watch and a county the county car personal vehicle. My vehicle sure. Which, you know, and I do a lot of running on my gas. Sure. You know, my. And, and these are things that I don't know. Yeah. And that's why I'm glad that we're yeah. talking talking it out because I want to understand fully. Mm -hmm. You know, this whole this yeah. whole circle. Um, so oh, I mean, I get called, you know, one, two o'clock in the morning. I have to get out of bed, go tell my daughter, "Hey, I'm gonna run to work real quick. I'll be back." And these I, are the things that, you know, I, I know when you're talking about. I want to say the term covert operations when you're doing drug yeah. buys and such. Yes. A lot of guys, you know, some stuff may be kept off the log, but when things like this are brought to attention and it's required that they be looked into. I just wish that this kind of stuff was notated on the log because I'm only as good right. as the data that I have at my disposal. Right. And without me talking to you and finding this out, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known any better. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I, again, I believe you. I, I know that I could call to your... Okay. Here, okay. I was going to leave that crack, Jamie, is that all right? Okay. Um, like I said, I would never do anything purposely to, you know, just not the type of person I am. Sure. And, again, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, I, I can't tell you one way or the other. I'm just here to ask you questions and, and hope, yeah. hopefully, you know, I'm getting, I, I, I believe I'm getting truthful answers. Um, that's just one of those things that, I, it's just the investigation. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not something that, um, you know, this is treated the same way as anything else. Yeah. Well, I know there's some days, too, that I was here, and when I looked back, like, there weren't, there was nothing on the, on the wall. Like, it doesn't even show I came in that day, but I was there. And, you know, that's, like, again, it goes back to who can authenticate those log records and, Mm -hmm. um, people can sit there and say, yeah, I put those in, they're 100% accurate. Yeah. I mean, they're just not. They're yeah. not going to be because, you know, I understand that in 911, you get hammered with four or five 911 calls, you ain't miss somebody coming in and out the back door. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what I'm just, what I want to make sure I understand fully is just if it's one or two discrepancies, you know, I, I get that. But it just seems as if there's a lot of them, and, and I know you said you would never purposely mm -hmm. do anything to defraud the county for money. It's just, it is a fairly large figure that I've come to. Um, I know that you started working some overtime back in, it looks like, uh, September of 2018. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's when dispatch started. Mm -hmm. um, there were some... I don't get any overtime for... The secretary of duties. Secretary job at all. Like so, when I have to come in, like, you know, I don't get anything right. for that. And there again, I would have to pull um, the pay records to show to you. But I recall back in late 2018, 
into 2019, there were um, some overtime that you had documented that, that was worked, but in 911, I assume it was overtime, mm -hmm. that you were not reflected on the log at all. Now, as being there? As being there, and I don't know about it, it was a simple oversight. On, it would be on, do you have the dispatch schedules? I don't have the schedules. I have. I was going to say it would the, probably be on the dispatch schedule. The tiger, or not the tiger track? Is it still tiger track? The tiger track log and the pay records is what I have just cross referenced with each pay period. So yeah. it's it's just it's things like that that stick out. And to me, as I look at it, I'm just like, okay, I'm going through. Okay, discrepancy and you know, mm -hmm. I, not red flag necessarily, but just things I'm marking yeah. as part of the investigation that I want to ask about. Yeah. So yeah, we can, I can get you that dispatch schedule that would show. Well, so as far as the paperwork goes, I uh, sure. I mean, if you can get those to me, that'd be great. Yeah, if you just let um, me what what day or whatever it is. I will tell you that there is. Um, so I have the electronic Excel spreadsheet copies. Mm -hmm. There is more than likely a subpoena coming. Um, for your carbon copy timesheets. Okay. I don't have carbon copy timesheets. You, you guys don't fill out carbon copy timesheets? No, I have a, um, just an employee sheet. Mm -hmm. Like, it's for the whole year. Okay. And so I just do, you know, 8-8 eight, eight, vacation, sick, comp time, whatever is all on a year, just a year of the sheet. Yeah, just so like... So I don't do like what... The deputies do. Yeah, you know, no. Okay. Administration just has the individual sheet. I've got you. All right. So, I guess to close it out, um, you know, you've been adamant that there's nothing that you have done that has been, you know, intentionally mm -hmm. meant to defraud the county from money. Right. Um, you know, it, it appears just in looking at the records, you know, Sometimes, oftentimes you come in a little late, sometimes you leave a little early, but the sheriff is okay with that mm -hmm. based on what you told me. Um, and all of this is subjective. I'm not here to, to throw opinions around. It seems to me, again, from the outside looking in, that, that Jeff probably should be a little bit more strict, per se, because now it comes down to a matter of perception. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at this and now I have to notate um, the facts onto a report as I see them and then when I put in there, you know, that, that Jeff by all appearances is, is lenient, he's okay with his employees, you know, coming in late, leaving early, a lot of people probably are going to think, well, that's not cool um, because we're all, we all work for the government. Yeah. We all, you know, as much as I hate. But like I say, I try and make up that time well, yeah, within, you, mean, you know right and that's there's a lot of times like on the logs that i'm going to walmart to get supplies or i've got to go to the post office to get supplies and all it would say is 211 leaving cj right. like it, it doesn't give say any kind of description yeah there's no description as to and to I that point doing. you know a lot of times we'll say 211 leaving cj then sometimes we'll say because there was one log entry that said 211 leaving for doctor's appointment or mm -hmm. 211 at one point it said 211 leaving to i believe it said shop for cars or something to that effect. So sometimes it gave a description as to what was being done or what you may have conveyed to dispatch and then sometimes mm -hmm. they don't put anything on there at all. Right. So it, it's, it was hard for me to interpret right. the log because I just know that their job is to input the data for everything that comes in and out of the building and I know personally that is impossible mm -hmm. to do all the time. Nobody bats a thousand. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Well, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut off the recording here in just a second. Okay. Um, and then I'll be right back with you. Okay. okay.